Hey, hey everyone, and welcome to another board meeting. Today, I'm doing a top 10 list. My top 10 roll and rights. Now, this is a genre that has been very popular in the last few years, and publishers are coming out with these games left and right. Some not so good games, but some, some pretty good games in there. Hopefully, I got all the good games on my list. So let's jump right into it at number 10. Number 10, Medici the Dice Game. Medici the Dice Game is the roll and write version of the older game Medici, done by Simple Games master Reiner Knizia. I have a feeling this won't get a lot of attention. It doesn't reinvent the wheel and bring anything really new to the roll and write genre. What Knizia did do was streamline this game like crazy. It is a dice selection game, and I have to admit I have only played this game solo. The dice you select, you get to reap the rewards, and all the other dice the AI gets to take. This is an extremely fast game solo. I think it takes me about 5 to 10 minutes to play a game of this. And that means if I'm bored and I want a quick roll and write experience with no brain surgery involved, this game will be pretty high on that list. Number 9, Quix. Quix is an oldie, but in my opinion, still a goodie. It is easy enough everyone in the family can play. You'll be rolling dice and crossing off different colored sections of your sheet from left to right. It is a very luck dependent game, but really a lot of roll and writes are, to be honest, and I don't mind that in games that only take 15 to 30 minutes to play. Fast and Fun could describe a lot of games in the roll and write genre, and to me, it certainly describes this game. Number eight, Deadly Doodles. Deadly Doodles is a flip and write game about working your way around your gridded paper dungeon. You'll be flipping over cards that have how you can move along through your dungeon. Players will need to move around the dungeon collecting weapons, slaying enemies, including the big dragon, and gathering up loot. I kind of see this as an easier version of Railroad Inc. I don't hear many people talking about this one, and I'm not sure why. Maybe the cutesy artwork just throws this into the kids game realm, but I still really enjoy it. Number 7, Ganshan Clever. Ganshan Clever is the combo-tastic dice drafting game. This game is about choosing the right colored dice at the right time and leaving the rest on a silver platter for other players. It has a lot of combo cause and effects. You take this dice, which will let you fill in another box for a different colored dice, which will let you get another re-roll, and so on. Ganshan Clever will make you feel clever, whether it was your intention or not to cause that chain reaction. And if you like this game or want to try it out, I highly recommend the app, which I have played at least a few hundred times. There is a sequel to this, and it's pretty close to the same game, but the dice will score differently, so you might as well check that one out as well. Number six, Trails of Tucana. Trails is a path-building flip and write. Each turn consists of flipping over two terrain cards and then drawing a line from anywhere on the map from one of the terrain types to an adjacent hex of the other terrain type. You will be trying to connect your paths to different symbols on the map and it's also a race to connect to these different areas for bigger points. This is a game I could see a lot of people enjoying and could rise up the board game geek ranks as it becomes more and more available. Number five, Fleet the Dice Game. Fleet the Dice Game to me is the more involved, more complex version of Ganshan Clever, except with a fishing theme pasted on top. It is all about comboing one move onto another move. You'll be rolling and drafting dice to gain new fishing licenses, recruit more boats into your fleet, and selling your fish at the market. Also, your different licenses will each grant you new special abilities, where by the end of the game, you are feeling like a pretty seaworthy captain. I especially like this game as a solo play. Number four, King Domino Duel. King Domino Duel is the two-player only roll and write version of King Domino which I actually prefer this to the original game. You'll be rolling four dice with your different kingdom symbols on them. Then the two players will draft those dice to form their domino that they will be placing somewhere on their sheet. Then those sections will be scored at the end using multipliers by how many of that coat of arms are connecting and how many dignitaries are in that region. Why I enjoy this more than the original game is the special actions that you can get that can be pretty powerful. King Domino? Pfft. More like King Dama, yes please. Number three, Silver and Gold. Silver and Gold is a polyomino placing flip and write game. You will draw cards and then fit that shape into one of your two cards in play in front of you. You'll be trying to finish cards, 
gain coins, and get palm tree points. This is a family weight game, and one of the very few games I have gotten my family to actually play, and they really enjoyed it, enough where I actually gave them my own copy. Number two, Cartographers. Cartographers is another polyomino placing flip and write game, much like silver and gold, but this game beefs up the complexity a bit. You'll be placing these shapes down onto your gridded map while trying to place them strategically to score in different varying ways for each season. What's really neat about this game is when a monster card is drawn from the deck, you actually hand your paper to the neighboring player, and they fill in that monster card shape anywhere they would like to on your paper, and most likely screwing up all of your plans. I kickstarted the sequel of this, Cartographer Heroes, which should be coming in the next couple months, which I'm pretty excited about. Number one, welcome to. On to my favorite roll and write, which is in fact another flip and write. It is welcome to. This is a game all about filling in your house numbers, going in ascending order on each street, and each number you get comes with a unique special ability, like building a park or pool or doing some construction. To be honest, I went back and forth with cartographers on which one I enjoy more, but I did ultimately settle on Welcome To. It is a great game, and that is why it got my number one spot. And that will wrap up my top 10 roll and writes for today. There are still quite a few I would like to try that I think would have made this list if I had tried them. I want to point out one in particular that I need to get my hands on, and that is Rajas of the Ganges Dice Charmers, which is the roll and write version of Rajas of the Ganges, and if you didn't watch my top 50 games, it made it pretty high on that list. I think that will adjourn this meeting though. So if you like this video, why not subscribe to the board meeting and check out more of the weekly content. Did you agree with my list? What games should have made it onto it? And what trash games did I put onto it that don't belong? Let me know and I will catch you all later. Have a great day and take care everyone. Bye.